If you have your Bibles, can you get them out so we can take a look together what the Bible has to say? Today I'd like to talk about language matters, theology built on one word. And if you have your Bibles, let's go over to the Gospel of Mark. And the Gospel of Mark is the second book in your New Testament. So going over to the New Testament, we're going to Mark chapter 12. And we're going to start in verse 26. So Mark chapter 12, and we're starting in verse 26. And it says in verse 26, But concerning the dead, that they rise, have you not read the, in the book of Moses, in the burning bush passage, how God spoke to him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You are therefore greatly mistaken. And here we have Jesus speaking, and he's speaking to the Sadducees, and he's telling them that in the book of Moses, that he talked about how God was the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob, and that he's the God of the living, not of the dead. And let's take a look at that in Exodus, but hold your place here in Mark. We're going to come back here in Mark in just a moment, but let's go over to Exodus chapter 3 so we can see the part that Jesus was talking about where Moses was talking to God. So we're going to Exodus, which is the second book in your Old Testament. So going back to the beginning of your Bible, we have the book of Exodus. We're going to chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 4. So Exodus chapter 3, verse 4 says, So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. So here we see in verse 6, this is what Jesus was quoting back in Mark. So let's go back to Mark chapter 12, and we can see that in verses 26 and 27, Jesus is telling the Sadducees here that, because of what God said to Moses, that he is the God of the living and not the dead. But to get more of a context of this, let's jump back to verse 18. Where in Mark chapter 12, verse 18, we can see, based on the context, exactly what's going on here. So starting in verse 18, it says, Then some Sadducees, the Sadducees were religious leaders, and it says, Then some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him, and they asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies and leaves his wife behind and leaves no children, his brother should take his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Let's hold our place here because we're going to see that Moses did write that in the book of Deuteronomy. So hold your place here in Mark. We're going to come back. But in Deuteronomy, which is the fifth book in your Old Testament, we're going to Deuteronomy chapter 25 and we're going to look at verse 5. So Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5, it says, If brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, the widow of the dead man shall not be married to a stranger outside the family. Her husband's brother shall go into her, take her as his wife, and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. So we see here, this is the principle that the Sadducees were pointing out that Moses had wrote this back in Deuteronomy. Now let's go back to Mark. We're going back to Mark chapter 12. And we're looking at verse 18. And let's just repeat what we just did. But then some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to him. And they asked him saying, Teacher Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies and leaves his wife behind and leaves no children, his brother should take his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. And they were right. Moses did write about that. And let's continue on. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife and dying he left no offspring. So here they're coming up with a scenario of something that may occur. And in verse 21 it says, And the second took her, and he died, nor did he leave any offspring. And the third likewise. So the seven had her, and left no offspring. Last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had her as wife. Now notice what they're doing. They're saying up a scenario that they don't even believe that the resurrection happens. So they're saying up a scenario that they think is going to trick Jesus into not being able to answer. But let's take a look in verse 24. Jesus answered and said to them, Are you not therefore mistaken, because you do not know the scriptures, nor the power of God? Taking a look at this, this must have shocked the Sadducees, because they were the religious leaders. And for him to say that they do not know the scriptures, nor the power of God, that must have been a very impactful statement to them. But let's continue on verse 25. For when they rise from the dead, 
They neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. So here he's answering their question about what the scenario that they had presented to him. And he's telling them that that's what it's going to be like. But verse 26, he goes back to the part that they did not believe about the resurrection, which is where we started off in this Bible study. And let's take a look at it because Jesus builds this theology on one word. So let's take a look at it in verses 26 and 27. It says, but concerning the dead, so he's talking about the resurrection, which they didn't believe in, but concerning the dead that they rise, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the burning bush passage, how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You are therefore greatly mistaken. And taking a look at this scene in verse 26, he talks about how Moses mentioned the resurrection back here in what we saw in Exodus chapter 3. But Moses was mentioning the resurrection there, and he builds this whole teaching off one word where it says, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Am was used. It's present. And even those three, these three men had died many years before, he uses it as that he is still God of these three men presently. Now, he, if he would have said, I was the God, then that shows that they died and they no longer existed. But the Bible teaches that when a man dies, his spirit either his spirit continues on forever and it's either going to be in eternity with Jesus or it's going to be separated from Jesus for eternity. And what's going on here is these three men were believers in, in Jesus and they had believed in Jesus so they have everlasting life. God was the God of all three of them. So therefore that they are with God and that God is still the God of the living. He's not the God of the dead but he's God of the living and that these Sadducees were mistaken with what they believed. So Jesus took the Bible very literally and he used his teaching, a doctrine, based on one word. So Jesus takes the Bible so literally that he teaches and bases his doctrine on one word. We should do the same. We should take a look at the Bible and try to apply the context and the situation and what the story is about and who is it talking to and base our teaching on that because this is God's word and we need to understand it to accurately apply it to our lives and to others. So therefore, we need to take a look at this and say, if this is what Jesus did with the Bible, we should do likewise. Well, thank you for joining me for this Bible study. I hope you, this has helped you out. If you have not believed in Jesus as Savior, that's the most important thing and it's a simple thing to do. We can take a look at John chapter 3 verse 16 and that's quite possibly the most famous verse in the whole Bible. But John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the person that believes in Jesus should not perish. That means they'll never go to the lake of fire but they'll have everlasting life. And that means that they will be forever with Jesus. And the condition is whoever believes in Jesus as Savior. That's the condition. So if you have not done that, please do so so that you receive the gift of everlasting life. The moment you believe in Jesus as Savior, you have the gift of everlasting life. And if you have already done it, then study the Bible so that you can defend when people come up to you, just like the Sadducees did to Jesus, when they come up to you and question you about the Bible, you'll be able to say, I know the answer because I've studied this before. Well, thank you for joining me for this Bible study. Hope this helped out. Tell your friends and family about my Bible studies. Gather them around and join me for my next Bible study. Thank you.